जय गुरुदेव स्वामी जी वी आर लाइव नाउ जय गुरुदेव सो वेलकम एवरी वन फ्रॉम द वीडियस टीम so today we will have swami purna chetanya ji who don't need any introduction so swami ji started his spiritual journey at the age of 15 with art of living he received title of swami at young age of 27 and got his new name purna chetanya from gurudev since then he has been traveling across asia africa and here conducting art of living courses in over 30 countries and touching thousands of lives he is the author of looking inward which is which talks about the root cause of stress anxiety and restlessness the book is translated to 10 languages and is widely loved by the readers across the globe He is also known as Dutch monk. So welcome, Seva Miji again. So, so today, uh, it's my honor to host you in the day of. Uh, we are talking about like Chitra Navratri in the session. So. we want to listen some devi stories and the significance of this chitra navratri and today also there is um, solar eclipse we all know and yeah party package yes <laughs> so and tomorrow also uh, the hindu new year is starting so everything we want to listen from you and also we want to listen as tomorrow chitra navratri is starting we want to hear how can we celebrate the chitra navratri in best in the best form like many people fast and meditate so over to swami jai gurudev so a lot of things to cover we have limited time of course but i'll do my best to speak a little about all of these things first of all it's lovely to be here with all of you I would like to start with one or two mantras, uh, as is the practice usually when we discuss some knowledge or go into any of these topics. And I'll take it from there. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namah Hari Hi Om Om Ganana Antva Ganapati Gum Hava Mahe Kavin Kavina Mupamashra Vastamam Jeshthara Jam Brahmanam Brahmanas अत आन श्रृन्वन्नूतिदन श्री महागणपत नम सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामिणी विद्यारंभम क्या सिद्धिर्भव मे सदा नमस्ते शारदा देवी काश्मीरपुरवासीहम प्राथे देवी विद्याबुद्धि चेहि मे ऐ सरस्वत नम गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णुर्गुर्देव महेशर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मच्छ्रीगुरपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओं गुरव नम सो नवरात्रि actually this this special time that we celebrate as the the navaratri the nine nights connected to the devi to the mother goddess to the divine mother happens four times in the year most of us are very familiar with the sharadiya navaratri that is in the in the autumn the fall no that happens around october time usually in september october we been celebrating in a grand way in our bangalore ashram and even other many other parts across india some other countries even in recent years with the homas with the celebration and then few years back gurudev blessed us with also starting to celebrate the chaitra navratri so which happens in this part in the, the spring you can say before the summer kicks in these are the two navratris that are celebrated uh, most commonly widely there are two more in between 
which are called the uh, Gupta Navratri. Is their secret? They're hidden. This is more uh, for the you can say the more uh, enthusiastic spiritual practitioners. It's a time for for mantra japa, those kind of things. But all of these are connected to the Devi, and it's one of the most important festivals. And this is also because, you know, especially for a spiritual person, why it is so valuable, you can say. No, Nava means nine and Ratri means the night. But this word Ratri itself, Gurudev has explained so beautifully to us, the actual meaning, how does it get the meaning of night? You know, why is Ratri the word that is used for night? Because in Sanskrit, all the words have a very beautiful intrinsic meaning. It's not just randomly, okay, let's call this thing X, Y, Z. The meaning of the word is inherent in the word itself, in the vibrations. And Ratri refers to, you know, Ra means giving solace, giving comfort, giving relief. And Tri means Tri. So that refers to the the three types of um, challenges that we may face in life. You know, the the three types of problems or three types of misery. And therefore, Ratri is a time to get a relief, to get a solace from these three types of uh, yeah, discomfort, we can say. You know? And these are, you know, the, the outside world, you know, the, what we experience around us, the, the body, so the physical. Then you have on the, the, the mental level, mental, emotional. See, some problems, some discomfort is physical. <laughs> You have pain in your body or you know, something is not nice around you. Some is mental. Your thoughts, your emotions may, may be uncomfortable, may be disturbing. And then causal. So we have adhyatmic, adhibautic, adhidaivic, three types. And when you sleep, when you have a good sleep at least, you get a solace from all of these, yes or no? no? You may feel physically uncomfortable like, like when you're sick or you've hurt yourself, maybe have some injury. But in deep sleep, you don't feel that. And that is why when you have a good sleep, you wake up, you feel refreshed because for some time you got a relief from that. There is a solace from that. Same with mental problems. You may be very disturbed, but if you have a good night's sleep, you wake up, you feel so fresh. And same on the, the causal level also. So all these, these levels. So how does it happen? Because for some time we go inward, we connect, we go back to the source. You go beyond the body, beyond the mind, and you go back to your your true source, the consciousness inside, the prana shakti, and that shakti that is Devi also, the Divine Mother is the shakti. So they say Navaratri is, is a period where for nine, ten days, which means nine nights, that energy is very strong. So it's a time for us to go inward, to connect more with the shakti, the Devi, the Divine Mother that is present all around us as this manifest creation. And also that is present in us is our consciousness. So these days you can do that any day, but these days are very conducive. The nature supports it. The energy is already flowing in that direction. Like if you're swimming in the river, if you're swimming against the current, you don't go very fast. And if the current is very strong, you may not even progress. If you're going in another direction, okay, it may be so-so. But if you're swimming with the current, you can cover a much greater distance very quickly. And it costs you less energy. So these days, especially for sadhaks, for the spiritual seekers, for all of us, are very precious because these days, if you do the sadhana, you're going with the current. So it's your progress is much faster. It's much more effortless. And this is also why like, we have a limited time now. But for those of us who've had a chance to learn a little bit more about the stories around the Devi that are usually also... Um, shared or recited or chanted during the Navaratri, you know, like especially for the Sharadiya Navaratri, the, the big one that we know in, in October, September, October, usually what happens you know, with the Chandi Homa, even now, of course, the Chandi Homa will happen, but in the Chandi Homa, the offerings are done with all the Adhyayas, all the chapters of the Devi Mahatmya, which is also known as the Durga Saptashati, the 700 verses that speak about the greatness and the qualities of the Devi, of the Shakti, of the Divine Mother. And there they talk about the different forms that the Devi takes to conquer various demons, the Asuras. And this is very beautiful because if we see 
these asuras, it's not that somewhere at some point in history there were some demons and then the day we took a form and, you know, killed them. Or This is all happening on the subtle level, as Gurudev has also beautifully explained to us. This is a continuous process where the Shakti Devi, the Sattva, the, the energy, the Prana Shakti in us, the Kundalini Shakti, the life force energy or the consciousness, again and again, becomes victorious over the demons. And then what are those demons? Those are the so-called negative tendencies. Those are the, the things, you know, that you can say the forces of darkness. It sounds very ominous. But basically, that is what, like any negativity, any stress, any suffering, it is simply the darkness. It's the absence of light. No? That is why if you see in these stories, the Devi becomes victorious very quickly usually because there is not really a fight between darkness and light you know people talk about this battle between darkness or the forces of good and the force of evil the point is darkness is not something that has an existence of its own darkness is simply the absence of light so the moment there is light darkness is already gone there is no battle if you have a room that has been dark for 10 years, the moment you light a lamp, it is light, yes or no. It doesn't take another 10 years or even one year or even one hour for that light to get rid of that darkness. No, that is instantaneous because the moment light is there, darkness is gone. Because darkness is nothing that exists. It's not a thing. It's simply the absence of light. So in these stories... They speak very beautifully about how various aspects of the Devi conquer various demons. You, know, you may have heard some of these stories. Otherwise, you know, in the coming sessions, we have more sessions by some of my colleagues, some of our senior teachers and brahmacharis and samajis and sattvis. And all. They will share some of these stories. Gurudev has also spoken about it. How she conquers these various demons. So they have names like Madhu and Kaitaba. These are different demons. No? Raktabi Jasura. Mahishasura, Shumbhani Shumba, Chandamunda, Dhumra Lochana. So the meaning of these words, again, these names of the asuras is very significant. Why? Because if we say, okay, Madhu and Kaitab. No? Madhu means craving. Kaitaba means aversion. So invoking the Devi, the Prana Shakti, raising the energy, will help you to get rid of craving and aversion. And that's what you notice when you do nice meditation, you do your japa or sudarshan kriya or any of these practices, when your energy is high, basically, that moment you don't have a lot of craving and aversion. It's not your nature. It's only when your energy goes low that sometimes you may experience suddenly that you feel very strongly, oh, I want to have this or I don't like that. It becomes more. It's more prominent. Rakta bija means... Rakta means blood. Bija is the seed. So the seeds in the blood. So Gurudev explained once, Rakta Bija Asura also refers to the, you can say, the genetic problems we face sometimes. Like we know some people have some genetic weaknesses where you may be more prone to certain diseases or illnesses or some other problems. You know, certain diseases manifest like an, in that way where it's like in... It's like it's in the blood or it's in the genes or in the cells. or So Rakta Bija Asura, that is also a kind of Asura. Mahesh Asura, Mahesha means the buffalo. Mahesh Asura is the tamas, the, the real strong tamoguna, that inertia. When the tamas is so high, then also you, you know, some people, when they have a lot of tamas, the way they behave, sometimes you may say, oh, this is like, you know, like a demon in the sense that they don't behave like a human being. They're more like an animal maybe. They're so insensitive or they, you know, they don't have the respect for life or whatever it may be. Shumba and Nishumba. Shumba means doubting yourself, self-doubt. Nishumba means doubting others. This also we've seen when your prana goes lower, that is when you start doubting. Many times doubt is because of lack of prana. The moment your prana goes up, energy is higher. Suddenly you don't doubt that same thing. You may do the you may have to give a presentation at work every day and you don't have an issue. Suddenly one day you get really worried, will I be able to manage? Will people like it? Will I and you'll notice that is the day when your energy is low? Then suddenly the doubt starts increasing. 
So like that. No? Chanda and Munda. Chanda means one who, who keeps, you know, who disagrees with everything you say. And Munda means who doesn't have a head, basically. So doesn't listen. You know, like you see sometimes when children get really upset, they close their ears and the, they don't want to listen. No, that is like some people, they may not physically do it, but they are like that. Whatever you say, they're not, li they're not ready to listen. Doesn't go inside. <laughs> and some people, they will listen, but they will argue. <laughs> I mean, people have told me whether it's your boss, your colleague, or your partner, or your family member, or your mother-in-law, whoever. But some people have this experience where it's like you, you come with one thing, they will disagree. No, no, you shouldn't do it, or that's not okay. And then you come with the opposite, then that's also not okay. <laughs> They'll find some other reason. So these are qualities that sometimes come up in our consciousness when the energy is a little lower. And then by invoking the energy, the Devi, increasing the, the Shakti, they are conquered. You know? We become free from those and you come back to your nature, which is the nature of consciousness. So on a daily basis, these battles are going on. And sometimes, for some time, temporarily, it may look like the demons are victorious when... You may feel a little more negative or low, or, but then again, when you increase the prana, and that's where the sadhana, of course, is very valuable. Again, Devi becomes victorious. But these times in the year, these four times of Navratri, especially these main two, are very valuable to, you know, take out some time to focus more on this because you can say, okay, we are busy. So maybe not every day you can, whether you want to do some fasting or, you know, some special chanting or some more sadhana or whatever it may be. So to say at least these times, then it's like you're swimming with the current. So the effect is much more. Nature also supports it. Like you may give your car for servicing twice a year. or I mean, it depends, of course, how much you use it and where you, <laughs> where you use it. But like this, this you can see is a little bit like that big servicing for the for the consciousness and for the body and mind as well. And there are many more things we can talk about it, but the time is limited. But because Mohit, you mentioned about, you know, some of these things that, okay, what are the best way to celebrate? Um, of course, the last day is called the day of victory, because if you do it nicely, then that day, the Devi is victorious over all these negative qualities. You become free from all of that. And that is why if you see that the way people do this, you know, like how do you increase this prana? How do you increase the shakti? So that is all these things people do. It can be listening to knowledge or discussing knowledge, worshipping, doing pujas, doing chanting of mantras, singing bhajans, you know, satsang, uh, meditation, pranayama, fasting, you know. All of these because it purifies different aspects of our being. No? And purity simply means this. You remove the inertia. You remove the rajas and the tamas. And the sattva remains. That is the purity. There is some background noise coming. Is it from somewhere else? Can we mute uh, something? Yeah. So fasting purifies the body. Of course, do it in the proper way. But when done in a proper way, yes, it purifies the body. Silence purifies your speech. It calms down the mind. No? Knowledge purifies the intellect. Meditation brings you closer to your nature. So that all of these things have their own uh, place. And to the extent that you can, you can celebrate at home. You know, Some people may have they make a nice special altar. You do some chanting, maybe some stotra every day or some japa. Um, if not that, at least you can meditate for some time or listen to some chanting. You know, there's beautiful chanting available online also, like Devi Kavacham or you know, other mantras. Uh, I also recorded some of the suktas, like the, De the Devi Sukta, Durga Sukta, you know, Sri Sukta, all of these. Then you can do some, you know, uh, some bhajans, if you if you like that, some satsang you can do. Listen to some knowledge or discuss some knowledge, meditate, all of these things. You know, it's very nice. And of course, if you have the opportunity, then one of the best ways to celebrate is to be present during these, these yagyas, no? during the homas, the pujas. So, of course, through our Vedic Dharma Sanstan, in different places in India, we are having these live Navratri celebrations, Chaitra Navratri, where you can actually be 
physically present if you have the possibility to sit there, be there where the chanting happens, where the yagyas happen. Otherwise, even online, you, know, you can you can watch the all the homas online. You can take the sankalpa. So then, even if you cannot travel there or you cannot take out the time, you can be a part of it by taking a sankalpa or becoming a yajaman. You are contributing. You know, so you're making it possible for all the other people who are attending because it's free. You know, so, but you're making it possible for them. And of course, we have these these online uh, knowledge sessions also that you can be a part of. And because you gave me one more thing to talk about, <laughs> we also have a eclipse tonight. It's starting now, actually. Just now, it's starting. It's a solar eclipse. So there may be as a small nugget of, of knowledge for people. Um, you know, the lunar eclipse and solar eclipse have their own respective qualities. And during a solar eclipse, they say the best mantras you can do as a on that occasion are mantras for Dakshinamurti. Because Dakshinamurti is the form of Lord Shiva that is the embodiment of the Guru, the Guru Tattva. He's the supreme Guru. And Dakshinamurti is the one who can remove the darkness. That is the solar eclipse. No, the, the eclipse is darkness. It's getting eclipsed. And the darkness of the, of the Atma, of the soul, the Surya, that is done by worship of Dakshinamurti. For lunar eclipse, again, is different. But for solar eclipse, it is Dakshinamurti. And of course, apart from that, we have Prasiddha mantras like Om Namah Shivaya that anybody can chant. No? It's very nice. Those who have learned Dakshinamurti Stotram, uh, can chant it or you can listen to it you can meditate with it you know? if you want i have also recorded one you can find it online as well some of you have learned maybe online when i was doing these chanting sessions or with some of our other uh, teachers and otherwise mantras like om namah shivaya meditation is very nice during the eclipse and also if you've been initiated for example in gayatri mantra or something that also you can do but, but Dakshinamurti mantras are, are really nice. So Dakshinamurti Stotram or a simple mantra also like Om Dakshinamurti Yenama. No, it's, anybody can chant. It's very, very valuable. And of course, meditation. Mantras are a way to help us come in the meditative state. So maybe what we can do is just for a few minutes, we can do a mini meditation together on this occasion of the solar eclipse. And then maybe at the end, Mohit, you can also show some of the, the slides to the people. For those of you who would like to be a part of these Chaitra Navaratri celebrations, either in person or by contributing something or by watching online, you know, in whatever way that our BDS Vedic Dharma Sanstan is making it possible. Um, yes, and I um, hope that whatever I've shared, of course, we had a very limited time, but it would have given you a little bit more context that, okay, what is the the purpose of the Navratri, how can we make best use of it? Um, yeah. yeah. It was very wonderful. And so we can do also, a, a short, yes. Also the chanting Swami is talking about. So all the chantings are available on Vedic Dharma Sasthan YouTube channel. So you can just go and Lovely. scroll there. And you can also subscribe to that channel and press the bell icon so you can get notified about the chantings and all this and jo hamara navratri celebration bhi ho raha hai wo bhi offline bhi art jagah pe ho raha hai in india very so, nice beautiful so maybe what we can do is let us all close our eyes and uh, just for a few more minutes then this session will be over of course people can continue the eclipse will last for a few hours um, you can meditate or chant but what I can do is I'll chant a few times one of the Dakshinamurti mantras. And then we can just be in meditation for a few minutes. Om Namah Pranavarthaya Shuddha Jnane Kamurtaye Nirmalaya Prashantaya Dakshirna Murtaye Nama
ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मेति मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमवत व्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणा मूर्त ये नम निधये सर्व विद्यानाम भिषजे भव रोगिनाम गुरवे सर्व लोकानाम दक्षिणा मूर्त ये नम ओम नमो भगवते दक्षिणा मूर्त ये मह्यम मेधाम प्रक्षाम प्रयच्छस्वाहा ओम नमो भगवते दक्षिणा मूर्त ये मह्यम मेधाम प्रक्षाम प्रयच्छस्वाहा ओम नमो भगवते दक्षिणा मूर्त ये मह्यम मेधाम प्रक्षाम प्रयच्छस्वाहा ओम नमो भगवते दक्षिणा मूर्त ये मह्यम मेधाम प्रक्षाम प्रयच्छस्वाहा ओम नमो भगवते दक्षिणा मूर्त ये मह्यम मेधाम प्रक्षाम प्रयच्छस्वाहा ओम नमो भगवते दक्षिणा मूर्त ये मह्यम मेधाम प्रक्षाम प्रयच्छस्वाहा ओम नमो भगवते दक्षिणा मूर्त ये मह्यम मेधाम प्रक्षाम प्रयच्छस्वाहा ओम नमो भगवते दक्षिणा मूर्त ये मह्यम मेधाम प्रक्षाम प्रयच्छस्वाहा ओम नमो भगवते दक्षिणा मूर्त ये मह्यम मेधाम प्रक्षाम प्रयच्छस्वाहा ओम नमो भगवते दक्षिणा मूर्त ये मह्यम मेधाम प्रक्षाम प्रयच्छस्वाहा ओम नमो भगवते दक्षिणा मूर्त ये मह्यम मेधाम प्रक्षाम प्रयच्छस्वाहा May Guru's blessings remove any darkness that is there in our life. Wish you all a very beautiful Chaitra Navratri, an auspicious Surya Grahan, solar eclipse. We'll share the details on the slides and if you want to meditate for some more time also you can do so. Lots of love and blessings. Thank you so much Swamiji for coming.